What's going on, family? It's the Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs series. Bonnie Loss versus Tony Canzanieri. Chicago, Illinois, June 23rd, 1933. They would fight for the World Lightweight Championship of the World. And Bonnie Loss would become the lightweight champion of the world. But I don't want to go through that fight, but I want to go through it with you right here on the museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff series. Fascinating fighter, fascinating fights. Let's take a look at their careers. Tony Cazanari, born November 6, 1908, Slendale, Louisiana. He died December 9, 1959, in New York, New York. But Tony Cazanari stood 5 foot 4 inches. He weighed 117 and 143 and 3 quarter pounds. He was managed by Sammy Goldman and trained by Dan Florio and his brother Nick Florio. Now he had 137 wins, 24 losses, 44 by the knockout route. He had four no decisions. He won a featherweight championship, lightweight championship, and junior welterweight championship of the world. He was inducted into the Ring Boxing Hall of Fame in 1956 and the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990. Now, in 1927, the tender age of 19, Canzanieri would fight a 15-round draw against Bantamweight champion Bud Taylor. Charles Bart Taylor was a fascinating fighter. Oh, and they went to war. Bart Taylor was just a veteran. And Tony Canzanieri was swinging that fight back and forth. But Charles Bart Taylor was just a veteran. And that fight would become a draw. And Bud Taylor would later on say that Tony Canzanieri was an up-and-coming fighter and he needed to be watched out for. For his age of tender, age of 19, he knew the trick of the trade. 1928, he would win the featherweight championship of the world when he faced Benny Bass. Benny Bass was from Philadelphia. Hard punchy slugger. But Tony Canzanieri had a unique style. Now he would step and bounce from side to side while he stood right in front of you. Two fisted fighter, held his home hands low, but he would punch him either hand, either direction. He was a fantastic fighter, was Tony Canzanieri. 1929, he would win the lightweight championship from Al Singer. With an awesome straight right hand, he would knock out this young man in the very first round and put him to sleep. 1931, Tony Canzanieri would win the Junior Lightweight Championship with a nice KO, beautiful knockout over Jackie Kid Bird in three rounds. So Tony Canzanieri was on his way to stardom. 1933, Canzanieri would lose to Barney Ross. Barney Ross was from Chicago. And he was a young up and coming fighter. But he could fight. And he would lose to Barney Ross. One of the finest fights of that year. But Tony Cazanari would fight again and get another opportunity. This time he would face Frankie Click, defeat him in 10 rounds, and score a second round knockout over outstanding Hall of Famer, Kate Chocolate, and a fifth round win over Cecil Payne. 1935, Cazanari will win his last world title, defeating Lou Ambers, and a 15 round scrap for the World Lightweight Championship of the World. Now, Barney Ross was from the pride of Chicago. He was born December 23, 1909, 
And he died January 17th, 1967, in Chicago, Illinois. Now he stood five foot seven inches, he weighed 131 and a half to 144 and a half pounds. He was managed by Wills Gang Looney and Sam Plain. He was trained by Real Cell. He had a fighting record of 72 wins, four losses, 22 by the knockout group, with just two no decisions. Barney Ross was an outstanding boxer who fought from September 1st. 1929 to May 31st, 1938. His last fight would be against Hammer and Hank, Henry Armstrong. And he would lose his welterweight championship strap, but he couldn't lose it to a better fighter. And at that point, Henry Armstrong would become a two-time champion on his way to a three-time champion. But Barney Ross would pick off Two world championship belts along the way. March 26, 1933, he would face Tony Canzanari for the lightweight championship strap and the junior welterweight championship strap. And I'll tell you, that was some fight. And when I first saw that fight, I realized that that particular era had some of the greatest fighters of all time. As you can see here, Tony Canzanari to your left and Barney Ross to your right. As Tony Canzanari looks for openings on the inside, Barney Ross puts his right hand on the shoulder of Tony Canzanari and he's ready to spin him around and uppercut him with the left hand. It's an old school move from an old school fighter. Now Barney Ross would face fighters such as Pete Nebo. Jimmy McLaurin was another fighter that Barney Ross would face. As a matter of fact, these two gentlemen would go back and forth with that title three times. One of the greatest fighters and welterweights of all time, Jimmy McLaurin. As I show you some of my Ring magazine collection here, another fighter would be Benny Bass. Tony Canzanari would take this title away from Benny Bass. Awesome fighter was Benny Bass. Just show you some of my magazines here. This is a sneak peek of some of my collection. Belling Bellino, Young Terry, Sammy Fuller, some of Tony Gazzanari's and Barney Ross's opponents. But on August 26, 1932, Ray Miller, Chicago, Illinois, he would defeat him in 10 rounds. Now Barney Ross and Ray Miller were both from Chicago, and they always held the headlines and were destined that they would meet. But Barney Ross would take Ray Miller to another place and he would defeat him in 10 rounds. November 27th, 1936. September 23rd, 1937. He would defeat Jimmy McLaren. On May 28th, 1934, Madison Square Garden, 15 rounds, and he would become the welterweight champion of the world. But in 1938, May 31st, in Long Island City, New York, he would lose 15 rounds to the greatest fighter of all times in the welterweight divisions, Hammer and Henry Armstrong. So Tony Cazanelli and Barney Ross 
would mix it up in one of the greatest fights of all time. I like how I always say all great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. This is Scrapple Box, the Museum of the Forgotten Fistic of Series. Salute to Barney Ross. Salute to Tony Canzanieri, an outstanding fighter. I have Tony Canzanieri ranked number nine of the greatest fighters of all time. Take a look at this record, and you'll see why. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Salute to my subscribers. Salute to these outstanding fighters.